you know what's cool is about nine years ago, there's a guy who you guys have met before, Ian Olin, who starts a website dedicated to Alex Ovechkin, Russian Machine Never Breaks. You have met Ian before, yes? Yes. So he's here. And I mean, when you think about how amazing it is for, for all of us, consider yourself dedicated to this day in and day out. Come in here, Ian. What is your reaction to this, first and foremost? Um, there really is no words. I've been waiting my whole adult life <laughs> and childhood to see this happen. And uh, this morning we were taking the uh, the Caps were taking the team photo, and I ended up getting uh, my picture with the Stanley Cup, and wow. that was one of my biggest dreams. So I, I was I was almost tearing up at the moment. So this whole thing has been amazing, you know. So for for people who aren't familiar with with you, tell about what you do. So uh, I write. I co-founded uh, Russian Machine Never Breaks (RMNB) uh, in 2009 with Peter Hassett. Uh, we basically cover the Capitals. Uh, the NHL at large, uh, and we do translations, we do a lot of fun features. Um, we just have a lot of fun. We try to cover the sport uh, as fun as it is live, you know, so. But, but there's a really cool story about the name. Can you yeah. share that story? Sure. So uh, I think it was in 2006, uh, during practice, uh, Ovechkin got hit in the foot with a puck. Uh, and then after practice, he was asked if he was, uh, if, you know, if he was injured. He was like, I'm okay, Russian machine never breaks. <laughs> and so uh, years after that, the Caps, uh, every time he scored, they would put up a cartoon and he'd rip off his jersey and he'd show a machine inside of his body. So uh, we thought that was really fun and really encapsulated what we wanted to bring as authors. And uh, it's, it's been magic since then. And Ian, you guys have a huge presence in this crowd. Yeah. Um, I actually, you remember when Cal Ripken ran across the uh, Oriole Park at Cannon Yards after yes. 2003 first game? Um, I actually had to do that with fans as I was walking to the media area. So uh, I, it's been unreal. I, I can't believe how much of a reception we got. We ended up having like 200, I think it was 500,000 page views uh, the day after the Stanley Cup, after they won the Stanley Cup. So it's been an amazing ride. Really what was it like for you to be at that um, team photo this morning? What were the guys doing? What was their demeanor like? Um, the guys were really, really happy. I think for a lot of them, they felt a lot of pressure uh, to win, you know, especially with how good the team has been. And to finally have that monkey off their back, you know, a lot of them you see are just relaxing and enjoying the moment as they should. So uh, it, it was really, really great. And I think the media, too, everyone was just really happy to be there. You know what's really interesting, though, is, I mean, they have maintained through this whole run that they were not expected to get this far. I mean, I think that was a massive motivator for them. Absolutely. And especially in the beginning of the year, they struggled, especially uh, defensively. I think this year they were so good because they got a lot of superstar performances from Alex Ovechkin throughout the year, uh, Braden Holpe. And, you know, after they got Michael Kempney at the uh, trade deadline to kind of stabilize the D, and Braden Holpe came in in game three, uh, I think they made some system tweaks, too, and they just became – unstoppable and I think after those two overtime losses to Columbus I think inside the locker room they were like we're just not gonna let we're just not gonna let the season go by like this. So. I'm glad that you said that because Barry Trotz the head coach when I was talking to him during that finals run he said there were two games there was one in Columbus there was one in Buffalo and he said they had a come to Jesus meeting basically in the locker room at some point around those games and it was just a conversation and that's when he believes the foundation for this run came to be whatever it was that was said and he's talked a lot about how over the course of the summer he felt for him he had a mental switch and he said he all of a sudden had this epiphany because a couple personal things happened to him about life and how you need to live your life and that you should just be doing what makes you happy and don't worry about what people say about you in the media etc so it's interesting because he said specifically that that Columbus was one of the turning points and for this it team. It feels like uh, like relief is as big a part of this celebration as anything else. They're Absolutely. thrilled to get to get it done. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I ended up crying, ugly crying <laughs> after they won. I, I regret posting that video online, but 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 I, I needed people to know how much it meant to me. And I think for everyone here. You know, DC Sports, you know, for 20 years, they couldn't even get to a conference final. So to finally have them win a championship, the whole city, every sport. I came in on a taxi today and the taxi driver was excited. You know, and that's the kind of stuff that means a lot to me, you know, that we can all enjoy this together, all you know. Right. And the fact that, Lindsay, you're here covering this, <laughs> yeah. it means a lot to me, you know. Oh. So, Doreen, it's happy to have you here. And I wish Thank Jim you. was here, too. I know, Ian, Jim and George. So do I. So no, I. Ian, Ian, you're great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so Thank much you very for much for being do. with us. <laughs> The Russian machine never breaks. Look for them online.